Alright, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Before I begin this video, I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Ha, Rekha, Kodash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, GMS, who rule well and teach well. And a sincere salutations to you, hopeful elect. Akim, who are out there pushing the uh, pushing the words he had by Shemia was shy in sincerity and in faith all throughout the four winds of the earth. Okay, Yah by Shemia Shai by Shem Ha for Kakudash Barakatham and to you brothers. Okay, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay, so this is an article called "The Last Days of the Barcode." Okay, so with the last days of the barcode. Okay, what are we gonna have? Um, to replace that, what are we going to have to replace the universal product code? I believe that's what it's called, a UPC. Okay, see these talks are going to eventually lead uh, to the chip. Okay. And this is a very extensive, very extensive... Uh, article you know well uh well written uh just gonna go ahead and play this video knows it's a box of cereal just by scanning a barcode with a laser what does the laser read and how is the barcode pro Salakium. we'll go over these things today but first Let's see how and when the barcode was invented. The story began back in 1948, when a research assistant at the Drexel Institute of Technology in Philadelphia, Bernard Silver, overheard the president of the local food chain complaining about not being able to automatically read product information during checkouts. Silver told his friend Joseph Woodland about this, and it soon became their next project. It didn't take them long to produce the first working system, but unfortunately, it was unusable. Why? Well, it used ultraviolet ink, but the ink faded too easily and was expensive. The hope for this project was still present, and they were convinced they could reach their goal with further development. Woodland's next inspiration came from a Morse code, and he formed the first barcode from sand on the beach. He stated, I just extended the dots and dashes downwards and made narrow lines and wide lines out of them. But these lines had to be read. But how? To solve his next problem, he adapted technology from optical soundtracks in movies using a 500 watt light bulb shining through the paper onto a photo multiplier tube on the far side. He later decided that the system would work better if he switched lines for circles since this would allow the pattern to be scanned in any direction. On top of that, circles were far easier to print reliably and decode accurately when scanned compared to vertical lines. On October the 20th, 1949, Woodland and Silver filed a patent application for classifying apparatus and method, in which they described both the linear and so-called bull's-eye printing patterns, as well as the mechanical and electronic systems needed to read the code. Three years later, the patent for the barcode was officially issued. Still, the barcode wouldn't be used in stores around the world for the next 22 years. But something important happened in the meantime. IBM was the first company to offer to buy the patent from two friends, but the offer was turned down. Ten years after the patent was issued, Philco, an American electronics manufacturer, purchased the patent and then sold it to RCA some time later. In those times, RCA was the major and leading American electronics company. So how did the barcode system become so popular? 
In 1966, the National Association of Food Chains held a meeting on the idea of automated checkout systems. Philco, owning the rights to the original Woodland patent, attended the meeting and initiated an internal project to develop a system based on the bullseye code. The Kroger grocery chain volunteered to test it, which made Kroger the first store in the world to use a barcode. But still, nothing crazy was happening. The barcode still didn't catch the attention of the grocery chain owners. The barcode adaptation took so long, mainly due to technological limitations, competing systems, and resistance from the retail industry. In the 1970s, things took a massive turn when guidelines for barcode development were set. The 11-digit system for identifying products was standardized, and it still felt like the bullseye pattern would rule. Along with the development guidelines, NAFC issued a specification document outlining the desired characteristics for the designs of barcodes. Even though the bullseye pattern was readable from more angles, it had a major problem. These barcodes came in the form of stickers and were attached by hand by store employees when they were adding price tags. The problem was that the printers would sometimes smear ink, rendering the code unreadable in most orientations. The cost of printing complex patterns such as the bullseye barcode was way more expensive compared to the barcode with the vertical stripes. On the other hand, linear code didn't have this problem. The code was printed in the direction of the stripes, so extra ink would simply make the code taller while remaining readable. Even if, let's say, the middle of the code got smeared, the bottom or top would still be readable. Because of this, on April the 3rd, 1973, IBM's design was selected as the NAFC standard. A testbed system was installed at Marsh's supermarket in Troy, Ohio, near the factory that was producing the equipment. On June the 26th, 1974, a customer named Clyde Dawson pulled a 10-pack of Wrigley's Juicy Fruit Gum out of his baskets, and it was scanned by cashier Sharon Buchanan at 8.01 a.m. The pack of gum and the recipient are now on display at the Smithsonian Institution. It was the first commercial appearance of the barcode system we know as UPC, which stands for Universal Product Code. So, now that we know how the barcode system was invented, how does it work? Does the scanner read black or white lines? Well, that might be one of the most widespread theories of all time, because the scanner reads both black and white lines. Scanners project a light beam at the barcode, and black stripes absorb the light, reflecting less light compared to the white space. The scanner analyzes the reflected light to decode the information in barcodes, and that's how it knows it's a box of cereal. What do you think? Will barcodes ever get switched up for something else and be considered old? We've already got smart stores in which you can only grab something off the shelf, walk out and get a receipt in your email. Leave your opinion in the comments and don't forget to like this video. <clears throat> See, and it's, and you know, right now they have the phone technology, but eventually they're going to, uh, they're going to put it, uh, into a chip. Uh, so like I said, really well, uh, really well made article just based on just looking at it. Uh, so I'm just going to read a little bit of it. All right, it says once upon a time, a restless cashier would eye each and every item you, the customer purchased and key it into the register. This took skill, but also time and proved to be an imperfect way to keep track of inventory. Then one day, a group of grocery executives and inventors came up with a better way. What we now know is the barcode, a rectangle that marks items ranging from insulin to Doritos. It's so ubiquitous and long-lived that it's become invisible. All right, it says uh, in this episode, it says, uh, okay, this editor gives an early obituary to a monumental and fading technology. Yeah. Because uh, uh, why is that? The chip is going to be replacing 
the uh, uh, the UPC. Okay. This is uh, Desai walks us through the surprising history of the barcode. All right. Uh, it says the barcode allowed grocers to stock infinite varieties of everything, which led us to expect infinite varieties of everything and made us the highly demanding and sometimes addicted shoppers we are today. We talk about the barcode and the technology that is about to succeed it. All right. Which once again is the chip. The chip is going to take is is going to be that new uh, uh, buy, buying and selling measure. Okay, you're not going to be able to buy or sell without this uh, chip. Okay. All right. It says we talk about the barcode and the technology that is about to succeed it, succeed it, which is more effective and more sinister. All right, and it, and it just had a uh, a transcript of the ep episode, right? Which is basically uh, what we just watched. Okay, so this is a little different. So. You know, like it explained, okay, this is a long time coming, this barcode and everything. So it's going to get to the point uh, in which they're going to have that CHIP, and that CHIP is going to be scanned, and it's going to have its numerical code uh, within the CHIP, uh, you know, in which, you know, that's going to be the only way to buy and sell. You no, know, you can pause this if you want. This is this is a lot to read. All right, and it talks about how because of the barcode, you know, you have certain people uh, that are billionaires, right? So this is this all has to do with buying and selling, okay? And seeing like the code says, you know, it's 11 digits, I believe. Uh, I believe they said, and see that barcode, that that barcode is, is going to be, um, it's going to be scanned. It's going to be, uh, um, it's going to go from the barcode to the, uh, uh, to the chip. Okay, this bar, see, everybody is used to the barcode. Okay, and when you go to the store and you buy something, you use the, the code, All right? But eventually it's going to be the CHIP. <clears throat> right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, read Revelation 13 and 16 and then end the video. <clears throat> All right, so this is Revelation 13. Uh... And 16, I'm going to go straight to the point. Well, actually, no, 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 no. I'm going to start at 14. Revelation 13 and 14. And deceived them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live, right? Speaking of, And that's speaking about Rome. That's speaking about Rome. See, everybody uh, uh, in this society, right? Basically, you you're uh, uh, 
basically everybody in this society is basically like a updated version of a Roman okay and see that's why in school they were so big on teaching us about the Romans uh, the Greeks so on and so forth see because this place is Rome all over again <clears throat> and this is gonna be uh, the biggest deception see the CHIP is the biggest deception because see the people think that by taking the CHIP you're you're going to um, you're gonna elevate when in reality at, as soon as you take as soon as you take that chip you if you're Israelite and you took that chip you basically fell from grace you are the two-thirds you're 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 damned you're going to be destroyed right uh, but anyways uh, Revelation 13 and 15 and he had and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So that doesn't mean that there's an actual, like, uh, picture. You know, it's not like there's a picture of a beast that you got to worship. No, that's not what that means, right? Let's read it again. Revelation 13 and 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, so not following this system. That's why you're going to have a lot of Israelites that are going to be beheaded. Because they're not going to, you know, they're not going to bow bow the knee. Okay, there's a, there's a special elect uh, of Israel that's reserved okay that that is not going to be touched okay and, and and the reason why they're not going to be touched okay is because they're not going to worship the image of the beast okay you know lords will we be of that number we're not going to uh take part in it see because that's by you taking that chip you're basically you you've given up you're done soon as that chip is up in your hand you're done with it all right and it's also uh, uh, in the form of a forehead CHIP also. So it's, so it's in the hand and it's in the forehead. Okay. So Revelation 13 and 16. And he causeth all. So who is he? He is Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed white man. Causeth all. Okay. So that's everybody. Both small and great. Right. So from your just quote unquote nobodies to your, your great, your great somebodies. Right. Rich and poor, free and bond. So that's people who are locked up, and that's people uh, who are quote unquote free, right? To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. That that mark in their right hand is a physical mark. Okay, today it is known as the RFID microchip. That is the MOTB, right? Or in their foreheads. So once again. This is this is a uh, um, this is a technology that is uh, tied to just about every form and facet of life. Uh, primarily commercially, this is this is going to be for uh, a commercial use for the storing of information, for the gathering of information. Um, you know, it, it's it's going to be something that the people are going to definitely be uh, invested in, man. Okay, and because you are invested in that, you basically you, you you basically double down on the world. All you niggas who are in the world, by you taking that CHIP, you've doubled down in the world, and you go and you gonna fail. That's like when you when you play poker and you double down, or or uh, uh, sorry, when you play um, blackjack and you double down. Basically, you're you're not only you're betting, you're betting twice. See, that's you niggas. You, by you partaking in this society, right? That's you already putting, you know, that's you already betting. And then what do you do? When you take that CHIP, you doubling down, nigga, and you going to fail. And once you bust, once you, once you bust and, you, and, you, and you're done and you're, and you're through, you're going to realize when the missiles hit you that this MOTB, that was your end, man. Because, see, because it's going to be warnings going out for right now. We still telling the, uh, uh, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans not to take the CHIP. We still, you know, we still out on the highways and byways bringing out Revelation 13 and 16, right? But it's going to come a time in which the Lord is going to 
uh, uh, close the mouths of, of his prophets through the spirit and power of Yah by Shem man. And, and that, and, and the people, and the people are gonna think back to that moment when they, when they heard, okay, the elder apostles of Great Millstone speaking about the chip, okay, and they're gonna sigh and cry, and then them fucking missiles are gonna hit them. And good, good for you niggas, man. You want to take, you want to partake in this society. This wicked ass place, man. This, this is this is hell. Okay, and they got more hell coming, man. Okay, Revelation thirteen and seventeen, right in Salakia. But you're not gonna be able to enter any sort of uh, uh, building, right? You're not gonna be able. To, so you're gonna have to verify yourself in these times to come, because things gonna get so crazy. They're gonna want to. Uh, know your facial recognition. They're gonna want to know your, you know. I don't, don't want to get too uh, uh, specific with the wording, but they're gonna want to, you know, know your uh, um, your BP, your your different, you know. Uh, and I and and you know how they like to do when you start talking too much about the, you know, that sort of stuff. But every every form and facet. Of your life is going to be tied to that CHIP. You see, this nigga Esau wants to basically rule over you and rein you in as a as an ultimate slave. That CHIP is total control, total control over you. Okay. Uh, Revelation thirteen and seventeen, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. Yeah, so you won't be able to buy or sell unless you have that M A R K. Okay. It says, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Which, once again, that, that all comes with the chip. That all that that's all describing the chip. That's all describing, okay, the MOTB. Revelation thirteen and eighteen. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Right, like we were taught, a score is twenty. Right, so that's six hundred sixty and six. Right, six six six. Okay, and that 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 is a rep. That's a representation of e. See, e e is the e is the ultimate wicked man. All right, which that uh uh the the number six goes into cutting. Right, so this nigga, this nigga, uh, uh, he's gonna, he's gonna try to penetrate you, okay? All right, like the elder Yashawamba uh, was speaking on. Okay, he's gonna try to penetrate you. Okay, we need to be calling out. That, that's why we're calling out. We're, we are speaking on what's taking place. Okay, as to warn the others, as to and the others are you Israelites? That's who we're warning. The Negro, so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American man, woman, and child. We're speaking on that. We're telling you, hey, the MOTB, that is this chip. This chip is coming. They're they not putting up these fucking articles for nothing, man. Okay, they telling you, <laughs> they telling you, Jake's, what's about to take place. Okay, they're they're openly showing you what they're doing. Okay, and the Lord puts the spirit on brothers, starting off with the elder apostles of Great Millstone, elder bishops, right? You know, all the way down to the younger brothers in this truth. Okay, put spirit, okay, on them. All right, put spirit on us, okay, to go out on the highways and byways and speak about this, to, okay, to do these videos, okay, day in and day out, prophesying the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. See, these are the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. Okay, this ain't something that we just came up with. Okay, we're, te we're teaching what was taught to us. Okay, the CHIP is basically one of the biggest prophecies in the scriptures. Okay, so it's something that differentiates uh, us from all the other camps, you know. Uh, you know, uh, and, and we learn from the elder apostles of Great Millstone. That's who we learn. We learn what the chip is from the elder apostles of Great Millstone. So we're going to keep pushing that out that the c that the uh, 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 uh that the c h i p is the m o t b all right so with that lord's will you are edified call halal yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem ha rekakwadash 
double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, GMS, Rule Well, and Teach Well, and the sincere salutations to you, hopeful and like Akim, who are pushing this word in sincerity and in faith all throughout the four winds of the earth. Okay? Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Ha, Rukah Kodash, Baraka Thumb, and to you sincere and you hopeful elect out there. All right, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, uh, copy the article and I'm going to put it in the, uh, description box. All right, Shalom.